Okay, good morning. Uh, let's start uh, by uh, reminding you what we have done uh, last Thursday. Uh, we started discussing sequences in metric spaces. As usual, sequence is just a function from natural numbers to x. Uh, and we denote usually uh, the value of f of n by f sub n. And we uh, gave the definition of being a convergent sequence, uh, which is just the usual definition, uh, as in uh, real numbers. The only difference is that instead of absolute value of xn minus x, the limit point, we have dxn x. And we uh, proved again, as in the case of real numbers, any sequence can have at most one limit point. And the proof is the same also as the previous proof. Uh, and we showed that uh, any subsequence of a convergent sequence is convergent with the same limit value. And we defined Cauchy sequence and uh, the same definition, almost the same definition. And we proved that any Cauchy sequence is, sorry, we proved that any convergent sequence is Cauchy. And we gave as an example, well, I didn't prove it, I left it as an exercise, but the proof is the same, basically. And as an example, also, we considered the following. We uh, in the metric space of rational numbers with absolute value metric, we showed that the sequence which converges to root 2 in real numbers is not convergent in Q because Q is uh, because root 2 is not a rational number. And this shows that there are sequences in a general metric spaces which may not be, uh, which are Cauchy but which may not be convergent. And in this case, we say that the metric space is not complete. And uh, so the definition of being complete is the following. A metric space is called complete or will be called complete if every Cauchy sequence is convergent. And uh, we proved already in the first chapter that real numbers with absolute value metric is complete, but Q with absolute value we just showed that it is not complete okay uh, do you have any questions so far so if you don't have i will uh, start from where we left off last time so i will start with the following characterization of uh, closure in terms of sequences and the characterization is the following. So let A be a subset <clears throat> of a metric space. Space XT. A point x in x belongs to belongs to a closure, the closure of A, if and only if if and only if there is a sequence sequence x and in A, so the elements of the sequence lies in A. Okay, that's the important point. Uh, converging to X. This means what? Limit of X and is equal to X. Okay. So if uh, A is in the, if X is in the closure of A, then there is a sequence in A converging to X, and if there is such a sequence, then X belongs to A closure. That's the statement. 
and here is the proof. So let me first uh, do this direction. So let x is in a closure. Then we have to do what? I have to construct a sequence which converges to A. <coughs> uh, so we must construct a sequence xn in A, in the subset A, so the, uh, with limit xn is equal to x, okay? All right, how can we do this? Well, you see, x is in the uh, closure means what? We had a characterization. This means that any neighborhood, any open set, or any ball around x uh, contains an element from A, right? <clears throat> Uh, so I'll, the idea is this, here is X. I know that any ball around X contains some points from A. So I will draw the ball with radius one first. And I will choose a point here, X1, so that X1 is in A. And then I will repeat this for ball of radius 1 over 2, I will choose a point x2, so I'll first choose x1, and then I will choose a point x2, and I will just repeat this uh, for each and <clears throat> And this way, I will get a sequence xn so that the distance from x uh, and xn is less than 1 over n. And that will guarantee that the sequence xn uh, converges to x. That's the idea. So let's write it down. Okay. So let epsilon 1 equals 1, <coughs> which is a positive number. Since x is in a closure, uh, the intersection, which intersection? The intersection of the open ball with radius epsilon 1 and uh, a is not empty. So I can choose an element from that non-empty intersection, choose some <clears throat> x1 from this intersection then uh, for epsilon 2 which is 1 over 2 choose uh, x2 from this intersection which is not empty because of the same reason. And similarly, choose xn from this intersection. 1 over n uh, intersection A which is again not empty because x is in the closure. Okay. Uh, now uh, x then is a sequence uh, in x with x then is in a for all n and uh, the distance between x and xn is always less than 1 over n because xn is in this ball means the distance from x to xn is less than the radius which is 1 over n. Uh, in particular, of course, if we have this in particular, uh, 
limit of x n is equal to x. So this proves one direction. Uh, so this uh, proves. Uh, so if it is if uh, it belongs to closure, then there is a sequence in A which converges to X. Uh, so this proves the uh, this direction. Uh, for the other direction. Assume that, <clears throat> assume that uh, there is a sequence x n in A with limit x n is equal to x. Okay, so what we must show, uh, we must show. <clears throat> Show that uh, x is in a closure. <clears throat> However, recall the following uh, characterization of a closure: a point is in the a closure if and only if uh, any ball around x contains some elements from a. In this case, this will follow easily because there is a sequence in A which converges to X and the terms of the sequence gets closer and closer to uh, X. Therefore, those elements will be uh, the uh, elements of A which lies in the required uh, you know, intersection. So, we will proceed as follows. Consider any uh, Positive real number, okay. <clears throat> Since limit of x n is equal to x, there is some index n zero so that so that n greater than or equal to n zero n zero implies implies distance from x to x0 is less than r in particular in particular the n zeroth element right this holds for uh, x and 0 and this element is in the ball with center x and radius r and also it lies in A because this sequence is in A. In particular, this is in this intersection so that so that this intersection is not empty. But you see, I had uh, started with an arbitrary positive real number R I said and choose any R and we showed that this intersection is not empty. This means that the point X belongs to a closure. And X is in a closure. Okay. And the proof finishes, of course. Uh, let me remind you what was that characterization. Let me find it from my notes. It was characterization of uh, closure. Not here.
Well, I think I cannot find it yet, but uh, oh, here it is, right? Uh, it's in the closure if and only if this is not. Uh, empty for all R. Okay, that's the proposition we are using. Okay. Do you have any questions? All right. Uh, Okay, we uh, remember uh, defined being a complete metric space. Let me remind it. Uh, recall that a metric space XD is called complete if uh, every uh, Cauchy sequence in X is convergent, okay? And uh, the next result uh, uh, is the following. Maybe before I pass to this result, let me give you uh, one example. We have already seen that real numbers with absolute value metric is complete because any Cauchy sequence in R is convergent. And we have seen that uh, the, the metric space, the subspace Q is not convergent, right? Because it has a sequence which converges to a non-rational number. Therefore, it's not complete. Uh, another example of a complete metric space uh, is the discrete metric space for any set X. So here is the uh, example. Uh, any metric space, any discrete metric space XD is complete. And the reason is very simple. If you have a Cauchy sequence, then uh, the terms of the sequence should get closer and closer to each other. But in a discrete metric space, the uh, distance function takes two values, 0 or 1. So the distance between two numbers, two elements, is very small. Let's say it is less than 1 over 2. In that case, the distance should be 0. And this means the two elements are equal to each other. Well, in a Cauchy sequence, then, after some index on, distance between any two elements is less than 1 over 2, will be less than 1 over 2. It means the sequence will be a constant sequence, right? Uh, because uh, if the distance is less than 1 over 2, it means uh, they are the same elements. Uh, but if you have a constant sequence, of course, it is convergent. So that's the proof. So uh, to see this, let Xn be a Cauchy sequence. In X, uh, choose, OK. Let epsilon to be 1 over 2, which is a positive number. Uh, then there is some index and 0 so that so that m and n larger than n0 implies distance from xn and xm is less than epsilon which is 1 over 2 
but in a metric space a distance between two numbers the distance between two numbers is less than 1 over 2 implies that distance is 0 hence the xn xm is 0 if mn are larger than n0 in particular particular if uh, okay in particular xn is equal to xn0 if n is larger than n0 right because in this case both n and n0 are larger than or equal to n0 therefore they are equal this means after an index uh, in this case it is n0 the sequence becomes stationary it is constant uh, hence, uh, limit xn is equal to uh, xn0. Uh, therefore, uh, the sequence is convergent, uh, and this finishes the proof, right? Uh, so that, okay, let me write. So that xn is convergent. So I started with any Cauchy sequence and showed that it is convergent and this uh, proved that thus XT is a complete metric space. So we have seen so far three examples. Uh, real numbers uh, is complete. Uh, discrete metric spaces are always complete and re rational numbers is not complete and to obtain more examples of uh, complete metric spaces we need a result which shows the following uh, let xd be a complete metric space a subspace a d so here a is a subset of x i consider the same metric is complete then is complete if and only if if and only if uh, a is a closed subset of x so if you have a complete metric space any closed subset uh, forms a complete subspace and uh, conversely if ad is a complete metric space then a should be a closed subset of x so this is an if and an if statement Of course, in case of real numbers, rational numbers, re remember that rational numbers is not a closed subset, right? Because its closure is the set of all real numbers, and it is much, uh, much bigger than rational numbers. Uh, therefore, Q is not closed. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Okay, and the proof is simple. Uh, first, uh, assume that AD is a, a complete metric space. So, what we must show, we must prove, must show A is a closed subset or subspace of X, right? If this is complete, then A must be closed. How can we show uh, a subset is closed? Well, 
I need to show that uh, this subset is equal to its closure, for example. So uh, here is uh, what we can do. Okay. Let uh, X is in a closure. Okay. Then So what I have to do, I have to show that uh, this uh, point uh, belongs to A, right? If I can show that, this means A closure is contained in A, uh, and therefore they must be equal. But a point belongs to A closure uh, means what? There is a sequence in A which converges to uh, X. Then, uh, by the characterization of closure, then there is a sequence Xn in A with limit Xn equals X. Okay. However, uh, we have the following. Uh, a is a complete metric space, and this sequence is convergent in uh, in X, right? I don't know whether this element X belongs to A or not. However, I know that uh, X uh, in X in the metric space X X and converges to X. In particular. In particular, uh, Xn is a Cauchy sequence. Cauchy sequence in what? In Xd. However, if you compare the definitions of being Cauchy in X or in A, they are the same, right? They are the same. Uh, hence, uh, Xn is Cauchy in the subspace AD. However, the subspace AD is complete, hence, thus, uh, okay, by assumption, by the assumption. AD is complete and thus uh, XN is convergent in A. Okay, in A. It means what? In other words, words. This sequence has limit in A. Limit Xn is equal to, let's say, Y for some Y in A. However, uh, if this sequence is convergent in uh, A, then it is convergent in also X. And uh, uh, so the same convergence should hold also in uh, X because Y is in uh, A and therefore it is in X. So we see the following. Hence, hence in the metric space XD we have we have what? We have both Limit xn is equal to x and limit xn is equal to y. But we know that a sequence can have at most one limit. Uh, since a sequence okay, since a sequence 
can have at most one limit we must have x equals y uh, thus x which is equal to y is in a okay because y is an element of a therefore we are done right uh, our uh, aim was to show that if i pick any point from a closure then it must be in a well that element is equal to y and i know that y is in a so we are done Okay, any questions? Is uh, I didn't uh, assume that they are different. I just said that Xn is a Cauchy sequence, right? Uh, in A and uh, why it is Cauchy? It's a convergent sequence in X. Therefore, it is Cauchy in X. Therefore, it is Cauchy in A. Uh, but A is a complete metric space. Therefore, this Cauchy sequence must have a limit. And uh, so that limit belongs to A, of course. However, in that case, I have uh, these two limits, right? In X. And I know that in X, uh, in any metric space, a sequence can have at most one limit value. Therefore, X should be Y. But Y belongs to A. Therefore, X should belong to A. And that's uh, what I need. I didn't assume that they are different. I just want to show that X belongs to A. Okay? And I showed that uh, using the completeness of uh, the subspace A. Anlaşıldı mı? Yani soruna cevap verebildim mi? Uh, X is an element in A closure. But it's of course an element of uh, X. And then I, uh, you know, did some uh, stuff and I showed that this sequence is convergent to an element of Y. Uh, sorry, A. Uh, y is the element in A which uh, Xn converges to. But if Xn converges to Y, then... Uh, X must be Y because uh, I had already XN converging to X. Therefore, uh, the two limit values must be the same. So X should be Y. It is a little bit confusing, but, you know, if you think about it, you will realize that, <clears throat> you know, this is the argument. It should be like this. Of course, you may uh, write down different arguments, but uh, the basic idea is this. Uh, what about the other direction? Uh, is there any other question? Okay. Uh, for the other direction, we proceed as follows. Now, Assume that A is a closed subset of X. Ne göstermem lazım? We must prove that. We must show that. The subspace. Sorry. 
the subspace AD is complete. How can we show that a subspace in general, a metric space is complete? I have to take a Cauchy sequence and I have to show that it is convergent in that metric space. So let's do that. Let Xn be a Cauchy sequence. in AD. Do I know that it is convergent in A? No, because uh, actually that's what I want to show, right? Uh, I want to show that it is convergent in A, so that A is complete. But I know the following. Uh, I know that uh, if it is Cauchy in A, then it is Cauchy in X, because the two definitions are the same. In particular, Xn is Cauchy in Xd, right? If you write down the definitions for this sequence to be Cauchy in A and Cauchy in X, you will see that the definitions are the same. Therefore, this is a Cauchy sequence in Xd. But if it is Cauchy in Xd, uh, It is convergent, right? Because by assumption, Xt is a complete metric space. Okay, since Xt is complete, the Cauchy sequence, sequence Xn must be convergent in xd okay uh, in other words in other words uh, limit xn is equal to x for sum x in x right this is a convergent sequence means it has a limit. But I know what uh, Xn is a sequence in A and uh, this sequence is convergent to some element. Therefore, that element, whatever that is, it must be belong to a closure. Since Xn is in A for each n, uh, the limit point x uh, belongs to a closure, right? That's the characterization of closure. A point belongs to closure if and only if uh, there is a sequence converging to x, uh, where the terms of the sequence are chosen from A. Okay, so this belongs to A closure, but A is a closed subset. Uh, finally, finally, since A is closed, uh, X is in uh, A, which is A closure. So what I have done. Uh, we started with a Cauchy sequence in uh, AD, right? This is a Cauchy sequence in AD. And I showed that this sequence is converging to some element in A. This means uh, and AD is a complete metric space. Okay. Any questions? All right. Uh, this proposition 
will be very important uh, to uh, obtain uh, examples of complete metric spaces. And uh, actually, uh, although it looks like very, uh, you know, theoretical result, you know, abstract result, it is actually uh, very useful in practice. How? Uh, now, uh, the next thing we will do is to apply this result to function spaces. Uh, and uh, in mathematics, this is used, you know, those function spaces are used. Uh, for example, to solve differential equations, uh, to you know obtain solutions of differential equations, and that, uh, for example, you have seen in Math 240, uh, 54, right? Differential equations, Picard iterates, right? Given a differential equation, first order equation, you find its solution using so-called Picard iterates that you obtain a sequence of functions and then you say that okay this is convergent uh, all those convergent results relies on these facts the function space that uh, you uh, consider that are complete metric spaces and you form a Cauchy sequence and uh, that Cauchy sequence is convergent okay so the theoretical background uh, uh, you use in differential equations uh, is exactly this stuff, okay? Uh, now let me talk about, start talking about those function spaces. Okay, so our next result is the following. Uh, uh, now, now let S be any subset, any set, not necessarily any set, any non empty set, and consider the metric space. of bounded bounded real valued uh, functions on s namely uh, bs so what is bs remember that uh, okay uh, a cube with The supreme uh, supremum matrix uh, supremum metric. Okay, let me remind you what was BS. BS is the set of all functions from S to R. I don't know what S is, and I don't actually uh, care what S is. Uh, these are just functions from S to R. So that f is bounded. Okay, f is bounded. Uh, bounded means, of course, what? Uh, so if f is an element here, then uh, there is some positive real number. So that, so that. f of s is between m and minus m for all s is in s. Bounded means this, right? Uh, the values of this function uh, cannot go to minus infinity or plus infinity. They have to lie between two real numbers. In this case, it is uh, they are m and minus m. And remember the supremum metric. Uh, f, if f and g are uh, bounded functions, then d sub f g is defined to be uh, what 
it is the supremum of this set. I look at the difference of the values of these functions. Right? f of s is a real number, g of s is a real number, and I take the supremum of these differences. This set is bounded. We have seen that before, right? Because f is bounded, g is bounded, the difference will be bounded. So supremum exists, and we know that this is a metric space. This is a metric so that uh, uh, BS uh, with this metric is a metric space. Our theorem is the following. The metric space BS with the supremum metric is complete. Okay, so that's the result. Okay, so what we should do, I have to take any Cauchy sequence in this metric space and show that that Cauchy sequence is convergent. Okay. And the proof, so uh, take any uh, Cauchy sequence, uh, let's say Fn in Bs, in the supremum metric, of course, we must prove what? We must show that this sequence is convergent. Uh, so, uh, we must uh, construct a bounded sequence, a bounded function, an element f in bs, a bounded function, uh, so that this sequence is has limit f uh, in the supremum metric. So I have to construct uh, the limiting function. Okay, if I have a Cauchy sequence, then this must have uh, a limiting function. All right. Uh, how can we do this? Well, the idea is. Again, simple. Uh, you see, if you take any point in S, then uh, this uh, series is Cauchy means the terms between the uh, distances, sorry, the distance between the terms of the sequence are getting smaller and smaller. So let's say F1. S is here, F2, S is here, right? These are real numbers. This is the X, S axis. Uh, the sequence Fn is Cauchy implies that the sequence F and S is Cauchy. So these real numbers will be Cauchy, uh, form a Cauchy sequence. And I know that real numbers is complete, therefore, this Cauchy sequence will be convergent. Okay, so that will uh, tell me how I will construct my sequence, uh, my function f. But let's do this in the second hour. Let me give a break.